Greetings, fellow kinsmen of Israel. In Matthew chapter 10, verse 6, Jesus told his disciples, But go rather unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And in continuing to follow his command, I bring you this message today. In Psalm 94, I find the reason for doing these presentations. And in face-to-face -face, uh, issues, and anywhere I can, I seek to, to do this. And there's two reasons listed within what I'm about to read for doing this. So in verse 16 of Psalm 94, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Well, two reasons, obviously, to speak out against the evil and to stand with the Lord. There was a message put out recently about uh, those who speak out against things. Uh, they're so busy speaking out against things, why, why aren't they speaking for something? You know? Well, I suggest the answer is laid out right here. I'm standing up for the God of Israel against the evildoers. And I'm standing up for him against the workers of iniquity. We all have various gifts that have been bestowed upon us by God. And it is my prayer that in these many different gifts, the Lord blesses us with his grace and his spirit to guide us. In great tribulation, soon of which we'll find ourselves to be, uh, even more than now, the mounting deaths of the Cerveza juice jab is just but one of several items which the enemy has brought together to destroy us from the face of this earth. And so for this, from this perspective, I bring you my presentation today and I have a saying here. If one has not a biblical perspective of war, one has no possession of the understanding of it. Now in Matthew chapter 24, we find a few of the sayings that explain in part what's happening today and they will require a few links which I will leave in the description box all of these situations, which you can check out for yourself. In Matthew 24, verses 20 to 22, verse 20, But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. I'm going to leave you a link specifically for that verse alone on the grand solar minimum we are in now. It will explain it thoroughly. Verse 21, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Verse 22, And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh, be saved, but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. 
God is still, despite his punishment and judgment upon this nation, has still given us the opportunity to turn and seek his face and to be blessed. He is a loving God, but also he hates evil and he rewards it thusly, bringing the evil upon the pastors that try to keep us, our history hidden and who we are from us. I did make mention in a couple of videos back about Psalm 83, which is all about these type of people getting together and trying to make us forget who we are as a nation, that we shall be in remembrance no more. And of course, the modern Baal priests are continuing to serve their father in keeping us in the dark about that very fact. God himself delivered the first prophecy as he spoke to Satan concerning the two seeds which were in Eve's belly. Genesis 3.15 records that conversation and the enmity or state of war or hatred he put between Satan's offspring or seed and Eve's seed or offspring same word. The first victim of that enmity and the prophecy God delivered was the murder of Abel by Cain. That was the beginning of this war which we are in today. It hasn't stopped and in fact it's been exacerbated and it, it has escalated. Today now our sin has brought about God's judgment to a level that has not been previously seen. And he is faithful in his word concerning reward for obedience and punishment for sin. Reward can also mean being rewarded for sin. You shall reap what you sow. In Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And believe you, God, he will know how to bring about that beginning of knowledge. We find encapsulated in Proverbs, verse 7, we find out what is encapsulated in the beginning of knowledge. The God of Israel will teach you himself, if need be. Now, concerning that which I have displayed on the screen, I will get to that. But a few interesting aspects of a military nature. Here in Canada, the equivalent of a Roman legion, which would be a brigade, it's up to, up to 5,000 men, and all the measurement of units of the different countries are different. You know, uh, say, a, a regiment in Britain could be 650 men and and so on and so forth, so forth. It differs between countries. A Roman legion, for example, consisted of about four to 6,000 men. And an interesting fact was that the smallest unit of soldiers called a century consisted of between 80 and 100 men. Hence the leader of this small unit was known as a centurion. 
and we have the aspect of a centurion spoken of in scripture and there was an amazing thing to be found out about that if we uh, go into Matthew chapter 8 verses 9 to 11 verse 9 for I am a man under authority having soldiers under me and I say to this man go and he goeth and to another come and he cometh and to my servant do this and he doeth it well this centurion happened to have a servant that was very ill and he had asked Jesus concerning that very thing if he could heal his servant and this this centurion said you, you don't even have to go you don't even have to go to my house just say the word and it will be done verse 10 when Jesus heard it he marveled and said to them that followed verily I say unto you I have not found so great faith no not in Israel and of course he was speaking of the people of Israel whom the Roman centurion was. Not these so-called Gentiles who are not Jews. The Gentiles, another word for it is nations. And amongst, scattered abroad amongst these nations were the ten northern tribes of Israel, who Jesus commanded that his disciples go and find. Verse 10. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. I, it's something that bear, it bears repeating. Verse 11. And I say unto you, that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the kingdom of heaven a glorious glorious statement to hear now as we were speaking of uh, military units well in the uh, Canadian army like I say there's different uh, amounts of men required uh, for each of these different uh, titles of what they represent in the military. Um, our closest in number to uh, Roman, Roman Legion is a brigade and it consists of a few battalions and anywhere from three to 5,000 soldiers. A colonel is generally in command, but that's something uh, I'm just setting up here for you to understand. Now, concerning the aspects of a legion, I'm going to bring the perspective of a legion and the numbers contained therein anywhere up to 5,000 men. And here's an interesting description that occurs in the scriptures. This is concerning a chap known variously as the Gadarene demoniac. And so I will start in verse 8. For he said unto him, that is, this man possessed with many devils, known as a Gadarene Damanac. He said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Verse 9, And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Verse 10, 
and he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Verse 11. Now there was, uh, was there nigh unto the mountain a great, a huge herd of swine feeding. There's a double message in here. I mean, what did these demons want to go into? They wanted to go into what God has mentioned all along, what was unclean. In Leviticus, you can find out amongst in, in the food laws that yes, the swine is still unclean. You can't wrap your burgers in it throw it in the oven as pork chops. What did they choose to go into? The most unclean animal that God had put there, put here on his earth for a purpose. Verse 11 again, Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Well, he granted it. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. Verse 14, And they that fed the swine fled and told it to the city and in the country, and they went out to see what it was that was done. And they, verse 15, came to Jesus, come to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Verse 16, And they saw it, told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. But as today, exactly what they would do today, and they began to pray him to to depart out of their coasts. It's like they're praying today for Jesus to depart away from us. Now, concerning the legions, I would compare them today to these many bodies and organizations and people that are bringing about like the the great the world reset right Klaus Schwab read revelation 2 9 chapter 2 verse 9 and 3 verse 9 and from this point on, I'll just refer to them as three niners so that you get that. Revelation 3, verse 9. These are the people that are destroying and bent on destroying our people from off the face of this earth. M many others, including myself, have, have given these messages of truth to Israel, to our people. But like Jesus said, Narrow is the way and straight, straight is the gate. And few there be that find it. The broad path to destruction is always present. And you have to seek the Lord to help, to get him to help you to find that narrow way to give you the laws and the commandments which if we follow we're in a lot better shape than we are now 
So in regards to legions, let's see what legions have been acting against the best interests of our people and who we have succumbed to in such a major way. Universalism, all men are created equal. These people have been subverting the doctrines of Jesus, the disciples, and the commands of God for a long time. And so have we by disobeying those commands. Feminism, to destroy the family unit. There are names like Bella Abzug, Betty Frieden, and Gloria Steinem taking care of the first and the second wave. And then it uh, took a, an ugly downturn with uh, the advent of uh, Eileen Dworkin. And there's been hundreds of these into the vicious third wave feminism. And we can see the results in the courts of men against their women in concerns of child custody, which the women is, are, are always given the favor now, losing, the, losing custody, their houses, their jobs, whatever it, else it takes to support their ingrate spouses and their own children. I'm not saying all women are like that, that's for sure. There's some pretty deadbeat uh, members of our own sex that are uh, not too good. But nevertheless, the advantage still remains in the courts. And then there's the gay transgender legion. That speaks for itself. It speaks for itself. And then, of course, there's the Abortion Legion. Henry Morgenthaler, a Canadian of the uh, three-niner variety, um, prior to 1973, he personally committed uh, 5,000 abortions and he launched, uh, along with uh, the help of his cohorts in child murder, 21 clinics and he trained a hundred doctors to this end. He even received an award from the government of Canada. In the States it would be called Roe versus Wade and all the millions that have been slaughtered in the womb since. I mentioned in my last video that was a great blot upon this land and it's without remedy just that alone. And then, of course, the Cerveza Jab Juice promoters, the newscasters. I call them spell casters. It's as if they were casting a spell to get our people to believe in the wholesome goodness of this poison that they're putting into us. The spike proteins that alter your immune system and once you have it in you can't get it out the Bible speaks to the aspects of that and the owners of the companies I'll put in a link gee guess what they all happen to be of the three niner variety I'll put a link in there for that too. And for the great losses we have already suffered as a result of listening to these spellcasters, among which, of course, our governments are the prime deliverer of that message about the safety. Huh. So it reminds me of the prophet saying, peace and safety, peace and safety. Speak unto us smooth things. That's what was said in scripture. And unfortunately, so many of our own have paid heed to seducing spirits. Numbers 
should never be the basis for fear. Man should not be the basis for fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, the beginning of wisdom. And now I take us into the last part of this video. A couple of weeks ago, a relative of mine brought me over this old box. My father had passed away last year and this was my grandfather's box. So I've, I've waited many years to receive this. And uh, what's before you is a collection of his, his medals that he, he got from World War II. I'll just point out quickly what they are and get to the message. He was in the Canadian Army, he drove tank. And ratio-wise, he was in Sherman's. The Panzers were taking them out 10 to 1. So he was uh, driving around and I guess they joked about it, even, even amongst his uh, fellow soldiers here, saying, well, you're gonna have to get out in that tin can today. I mean, of course they weren't made out of tin, but uh, such was the success of the German tanks against the Sherman. So what I have before me here, Canadian patches. Now he served in a couple of capacities. He was, he was, um, you know, in the uh, British Columbia Regiment of Canada. There's two patches there. And he was also in the Canadian Light Horse, um, Saskatchewan, uh, Saskatchewan uh, Horse Crest. I believe he may have served in the 14th Hussars. This is the uh, Duke of Connaught's own rifles, which is, uh, again, uh, sig signifying of his involvement in the British Columbia res uh, Regiment. This, I believe, is an artillery badge, Canadian Light Horse. Another interesting fact, from the World War I, a lot of the... Uh, battalions, brigades, regiments um, that were during World War I um, horse uh, horse driven or ridden brigades or regiments or battalions and uh, so during the Second World War they just continued on with the regiment named and they became a mechanized armored division, hence tanks. Okay, I believe this is a an artillery badge. I'm not sure on that one. Light horse, Canadian light horse. That could have meant tanks. This definitely did. Uh, Star of Canada, service star. Star of Germany and France. Um, then the different medals. There was the uh, Defense Medal, Canadian Voluntary Service Medal, and Service Medal. Now, anyways, all of these medals, it's like about the equivalent. I mean, it has intrinsic value. I mean, I wouldn't sell them. I mean, you know, I wouldn't sell them. But just as far as the worth, the value of the pieces of metal, you see on this table, 
at the end of a 50, 40 or 50 year career, somebody in a factory or, who, you know, whoever that gets their gold watch at the end of their long and hard service to the company, that's about the equivalent right there. Except he was uh, in tanks, like many of our forefathers in the battlefield, facing mortar shells, stabbing, gassing. And their, their bravery was second to none amongst all of our brothers. Many of us have family members that have long since passed. There was a million soldiers entered service for Canada for the Second World War. There are 37,700 left. That's 3.77% of them are left. And of them, the average age is 94 years old. So they haven't even much time and possibly even less now that they're all so gladly accepting this horrific cerveza juice jab. An entire generation is gone from the face of this earth. That's the generation of World War I. And let me tell you something. This is just one. This is just one. Our whole government or governments that are not run by the personages that you see on your television. Here's one of the Revelation 3 verse niners. And this is the common thread of thought of your worth that runs through your whole government and your military towards you. But this is pretty specific. So, this chap said this. And this chap, his name was Henry Kissinger, and it's quoted from a biography. And there's a few biographies on that old toad. Military men are dumb, stupid animals to be used as pawns for foreign policy. Let that sink in. And it doesn't matter if you have a uniform on or not nowadays. Your uniform is who you are. And that would be of the white Western European races. We're number one on the list. All of our people are everywhere. Such as a sister of mine who went back to her home country of South Africa to stand up for them there. She's done a wonderful job for the Lord. Our people that serve the Lord, that try to wake you, to the danger you're in. Now, just to end this, this particular presentation, I've got more to do in my next one. I'll be finishing off a couple of things, but I've not much time left to, to uh, be doing as much in this sense of preparing these videos. I, and I really appreciate our brothers and sisters that do this. For, for for the house of Israel and Judah. The two houses that were separate that are combined into Israel now. I appreciate the effort and my, my thanks to God for you. And I'm going to ask you a question right now. You've heard the old saying, Truth is stranger than fiction. 
Well, it usually is because our world is so full of lies. The truth seems stranger than fiction. But I want to ask you a question. On behalf of all these people that died in these three Niner Wars, I'm going to ask you a simple question, and, and it is this. It is this. Who first declared war? Who first declared war? And I've got a newspaper uh, front page from London, from England. This is a copy, an exact copy. From Friday, March 24th, 1933, six years before the war. And this wasn't the only paper in the world that had similar headlines as this one. Uh, New York Times, there, there were several around the world. Who declared war on Germany? Have a good look. Have a good look. Let it sink in. Blow up the page if you can't quite read it. There's many truths to be discovered in the Bible that are more, even more powerful than that. And I would ask you to consider, consider what's upon us now. I praise the God of Israel and to you, Father, I ask in Jesus' name that in these times that we're in, you would open up the ears and the eyes of those whom you said you would that none perish. We've lost the nation, the country, but one to one, going to you ourselves in repentance and turning to you. That is what I pray for our people. In Jesus' name.